real estate industry, particularly the condominium sub-market, has been booming in recent years. Property experts say it is primarily due to urban migration and how payment terms have been made easier for the middle-income market. Yet the housing gap remains high, especially among the low-income families who solely depend on low-cost government housing projects. A land of skyscrapers and promises. This is Metro Manila to Filipinos who migrate from the provinces in pursuit of a better life. There are 13,000 people sharing every square kilometer of residential space in the national capital region. Crowded and polluted, yet in rural consciousness, the metropolis is ironically the greener pasture. The housing gap is expected to hit almost half a million this year in Metro Manila alone. These projections are based on the National Urban Development and Housing Framework, a study mandated by Republic Act 7279 for the Urban Development and Housing Act of 1992. Because of the bigger demand for housing, the real estate industry has been booming. In urban areas, if the land is finite, you know, there's no way to go but up. Well, the real estate industry right now is uh, very upbeat. Seen, I have not seen uh, this kind of growth uh, in, the, in the past year. For those who belong to the middle income bracket, owning a house is easier now than before. Before, the banks were not lending to uh, home, uh, home buyers, especially the middle class. Know? But uh, right now, uh, they're more aggressive than giving. Imagine uh, interest rates below 5%. More than the easier credit and payment terms, there are also more affordable investment options, like condominiums. The condominium units, because they're built, you know, they're built uh, over uh, a certain period of time, let's say three years to four years, you know, sometimes the, um, the developer uh, would ask for a very slow payment term of the down payment. Raquel Manuel Abad and her family have been living in a condominium building in Mandaluyong City since December 2013. Before, I lived two hours away from my work and from my school. So two hours papunta, two hours pabalik. So that's around four hours every day of, I think, is a wasted time. So I computed it like 1,440 hours, parang two, two months ang equivalent niya. So I go, oh my gosh, two months of wasted time. Na anong ginagawa ko sa kalye? Staying in a condominium, making you uh, more accessible to a place where you need to go. The condo is very accessible. Strategically located along EDSA, the city's major thoroughfare, and is connected to an MRT station. The condo is also complete with facilities, like a mini shopping mall, cinema, clinic, and other commercial establishments, all within walking distance. I really like having a very big garden in front of, in front of us. No? Uh, to think of uh, paying the association dues is like worth uh, paying a gardener. And aside from that, I like having a swimming pool in front of me. And I also like the mall beside me. As condos are assured to increase in value over time, Raquel also decided to become an investor more than just a unit owner. We uh, have that surplus money, so we uh, decided to buy the units beside us. So since we don't need that, we, we don't need it yet. Um, pinaparent muna namin siya. So pinaparent uh, while earning from that, and since we have a growing family. Um, we tend to use it in the near future. If you invest your property in a low condominium, let's say one million, and rent that condo unit for 10,000, that would be a gross annual income of 120. You see now the disparity. Investment in real estate can leverage against inflation, yet you can have a cash flow. But not everyone can afford a condo unit like Raquel. 32-year-old Rosalie Tiozon of Navota City wouldn't have owned a house if not for the low-cost housing project of the local government. Kasi kagaya namin, kami na 
yung bahay na hindi na lang pa, nakakaipin mo pa rin ng konti. The beneficiaries of the housing project only pay a minimal amount for a house they say is at par with commercial housing. Na the design is first class yung design. Yung amenities, so nakita nyo siguro yung MRB na, nakita nyo na ba? Di para siyang condominium, di ba? The Navotas Homes in Barangay Tanza is a realization of the local government's vision to take away informal settlers from the slums and create a clean and orderly community for them. Yet, not everyone is even as fortunate as Rosalie and Lydia. There are thousands of homeless families in Metro Manila living on the streets. And there are even more informal settlers living in shanties deprived of a decent shelter. The National Real Estate Association says that government should continue to strengthen its low-cost housing programs. By strengthening, of course, the housing agencies, they should streamline and be strict in the imposition for lending for developers in such a way that they can mitigate, of course, over expansion and development. Apart from that, the housing agencies should also encourage development for low-cost housing. The um, summit proper, wherein uh, we created four thematic working groups and each group meet regularly, we actually come up with specific housing programs so that we can test the policies we adopted. We will see if the policies are sound and implementable, if we can see them concretely being put up and established. With a foreseen increase in the backlog of housing units this year, one thing is clear. The government, civil society, and the private sector should work hand in hand to provide decent housing opportunities. The housing summit is just a start, and we still have a long way to go. But the vision of a decent house for every Filipino family should not remain a distant possibility. And because a decent house is a basic need, providing it should be an imperative. Before I go, remember, anything, any idea, anybody can be a game changer. Are you?